Welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, I did a live passive reconnaissance activity with the packet scroll from Hack 5. And in this video, I'm going to do an active reconnaissance or scanning with the packet scroll. Uh, but as a quick reminder, uh, the difference between passive and active scanning, um, passive scanners uh, uh, do not add traffic to the network. They're generally undetectable by network devices, meaning they don't require an IP address to be on the network to capture packets. Uh, downside is they may not detect all devices on the network or all services being used. In the passive scanning activity I used, uh, the packet squirrel ran TCP dump. I uh, grabbed the uh, dump from that uh, device and I put it into Wireshark to analyze it. So now in today's activity we're going to do an active scan. So we're going to actually add traffic to the network. The device is going to send probes out onto the network to see what responds. Uh, generally this is going to be make the uh, device that I'm using detectable. It's going to require that it have an IP address and a MAC address. Uh, because of that, many network devices can block what's going on. Many IDS and IPS systems along with firewalls can detect the presence or the probes and they can block them. However, when an active scan is run successfully, we're able to more fully enumerate all the network devices and services that are running. In today's activity, I'm going to use the tool called Nmap, which is also built into the packet squirrel. Now, I'm not going to complete this scan alive, mostly because the active scan is going to be fairly time consuming. Uh, so because of that, I'm going to just go ahead and make this video and I will look at the results when we're finished. But as a reminder, I have the uh, Packet Squirrel Manual from Hack5's um, website here. And it is, uh, again, just a small device. It has uh, two ports on it, an Ethernet in and an Ethernet out. The ability to have a USB storage uh, flash drive of some sort connected to it and it uses a very low USB power so inside of it it has a processor and RAM and um, built-in storage. Uh, by default it has several payloads and on the left side of it it has a payload switch from 1 to 3 that I could use for any of the uh, default payloads. But if we look at the default payloads, uh, they are TCP dump, DNS spoof, and OpenVPN. And if you recall, I want to create an active scan, which means I'm going to have to create a custom payload. So we're going to do that in today's session to get things started uh, as well. When we look through the uh, Packet Squirrel manual, we'll see that there is a section on included tools. And in this section for included tools, we can see that Nmap is listed here along with several other tools. So that is the tool that we're going to take advantage of and we're going to have to create our own um, custom payload to use that particular program. So the next thing we're going to look at is how to create custom payloads for the Packet Squirrel. Well, Packet Squirrel lets us uh, create two different types of custom payloads. We can use Python or we can use uh, plain old Linux scripts. So in this case, I'm going to create a custom, uh, configure, custom configured uh, payload file to run the nmap commands that I'm interested to use on this network. On the screen in front of us, I have the payload best practices style guide here. And you can see that they list how to start off the uh, payload file for this. And we use our standard bin bash start uh, of the uh, code. I'm going to bring up the code that I put on the packet squirrel. All right, so here is the basic code that I wrote 
to use this. Um, according to the Squirrel manual, we have to name this payload.sh. So that's the first thing that you can see up at the top that that is how it's named. I then have the bin bash line and the comments as they uh, put in their style guide, as they laid out in their style guide. And I just called this the end map dump because that's simply what it's doing. Um, it's going to scan the network. You'll see here for the target, I listed the entire network. Now I got this network identifier from my passive scanning Wireshark results. So I'm using that result to uh, decide how to run my nmap scan. I'm going to use the bridge mode on the packet squirrel uh, and that will help uh, or that will get the packet squirrel an IP address and allow it to work on the network. Now the first line of code says LEDW very fast. So what that's telling the um, packet squirrel is to blink the LED white very fast. And it's going to continue blinking white very fast while it is scanning. The next uh, line says net mode bridge, and that is the bridge mode in packet squirrel, which is going to give me an IP address on the BR-LAN um, port. So uh, then I tell it to sleep for 20 seconds while everything configures itself. Line 15. IF config, I want it to write the uh, IF config to a log.txt. That way, if something went wrong, I have a reasonable chance at uh, diagnosing what happened by looking at uh, the uh, uh, IP addresses. Line 16 is the nmap line. So you could write this uh, any way you wanted to. In my case, I've got nmap with uh, four Vs, so very verbose meaning I'm getting a lot of details on the, uh, I'm getting all the details as nmap runs. The uh, hyphen capital PN uh, tells nmap to treat all the hosts online, skip host discovery. The dash E is telling it what ethernet port to use, which is gonna be the BR hyphen LAN. And then I have a scan for service, a scan for, um, a scan using the TCP SYN, uh, all ports, uh, hyphen A, which is going to be uh, try to determine the operating systems on the devices, and OA is telling it to write the results to a file. And the next line of code, MNT loot, uh, is the location where I want it to put the uh, files that it writes. And that last little code is just going to put the today's date behind the name of the uh, file so I know when it was collected. And the last part of that is the IP address, or in this case, the network range that I want it to scan. And the last line of code says LEDB solid, which means once it's finished its scan and written it to the uh, flash drive, to go ahead and give me a solid blue light so I know that it is finished. So like I said, this is very short. There's actually only six lines of codes here. I've seen a couple of examples of this that are much longer. Uh, but you would probably customize this for each um, each device or each time you run it, you'd change the IP addresses and probably the Nmap options depending on what you are looking for. So I'm going to take this file and then I save it onto the flash drive into a folder uh, called payloads. And then inside the payload, you have uh, three folders, switch one, two, and three. I'm gonna save this into switch one. I'm going to take my packet squirrel and I'm going to take that slider and move it to uh, position one so that the packet squirrel knows to run this code when it starts up. So my next task is to connect my packet squirrel to the network. Um, since I know it's going to request an IP address, I don't have to put it between any two items on the network, although where I place it is going to have a direct um, result or affect the results that I get. In my case, I'm going to connect it directly to the switch. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to wait for it to boot up. The white light is going to flash for a while. When it turns uh, blue, a solid blue color, I'm going to disconnect and then I'll rejoin this uh, video at that point. All right, well, I have finished scanning my small little network 
and let's go ahead and take a look at the results. I can actually do this right from inside Visual Code here. It's going to work pretty well. I can do a file, open file. Here I am looking at my uh, payloads. That's where my file is. I'm going to go into the loot file, into nmap. Uh, uh, and I'm going to open the loot or the log file. So I can see here, here's my brlan. I can see that it got an address assigned to it, 2.101. I can see ETH0, ETH1, neither one of those were assigned an address. And I have my um, uh, loopback is in there as well. So I know right now I got a pretty good connection. I can see that uh, bytes were exchanged, so that is good. So let's now look at the nmap results. And here it is. And I can see here that it scanned through the whole network and it told me, uh, since there's only a few devices, most everything was down. I do have a uh, start time and finish time. It scanned all 65,000 ports on these. So here we go, looking through the list. When I get down here a little bit further, it tells me it found 192.168.2.1, which was up. It gave me a bunch of information about open ports on it, 631, 5000, 7272. Um, so I've got a bunch of information about 2.1. I can see 2.100 is also has some information on it, and 2.17. Now 2.1 is the router, and 2.100 is the Toshiba laptop, and 2.17 is my Raspberry Pi. So it did successfully find all three items. But again, this is good, although this is not quite as user friendly as it could be. I can go ahead, since I told it to save in all three formats, I can open this up into ZenMap, the graphical interface for NMAP, and look at this, and it's a little more user friendly to look at that. So let me grab ZenMap, and let's look at the results in that format. All right. So now I have taken that scan and I have opened it into ZenMap. You can see here at the top I've got the correct target. Here is the uh, line of code that I used to look at it. I can see on the left side the three hosts. And I can see 2.1. Here are my open ports on it. And it has quite a few, but that is the, um, that is the router, so we would expect that. 2.100 is the um, Toshiba laptop. It's only showing one port open, 111. And 2.17 is showing me that SSH and HTTP are open. And it is also reporting back that it is a Raspbian and it's using Apache 2.4.38. If I roll over here to host details, it's telling me it's likely a Linux machine, which is good. Uh, if I go to 100, it's telling me also Linux, which it is. And here we are on our host and it guessed Linux. So we got all the valuable information from that scan. So if we were using this to do uh, actual penetration uh, testing on a network, likely we wouldn't scan the whole network. On this class C network, it took uh, quite a while for it to scan the whole thing. In fact, it took uh, something just over an hour to complete. If I ran that same Nmap scan from a uh, notebook computer, it would likely take in the five to eight minute range. So the, the packet squirrel, although stealthy, is not very quick. However, if I took my Wireshark results from my passive scan, I may just go ahead and decide to target those three um, IP addresses that I know are active. And then I may write a second Nmap scan to just do a fast scan of the whole network to see if it could pick up any additional um, hosts on the network that my passive scan did not. I would also likely change it so that the light didn't flash. If we were trying to be covert, probably having a flashing white light would not be a great idea on the packet squirrel, but that's an option that you can turn in on and off with the script. So this, uh, the packet squirrel is a great tool to aid uh, 
penetration testers when they're uh, trying to covertly uh, scan a network. It gives, them the, gives you the ability to do a passive or an active scan and most importantly the device is fairly small and you only need to have uh, access to any active port on the network wherever it is and you'll be able to capture some information and perhaps actively scan a portion of the network all right thanks for watching and hope this information uh, you find this information useful and give it uh, set up your own network and i would encourage you to uh, give active and passive scanning a try and seeing the different results